Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Amy Haynes and I am the Marketing Manager for Communication Products here at Macmillan Learning. I'm joined today by my colleague Heather Halter-Kimball, who is our Learning Solutions Specialist for Communication, and she will be doing all the heavy lifting today. Uh, this is the first week in our month-long series of brief webinars highlighting some of our favorite digital resources for communication. Everything we'll show you is available in Launchpad, which is our online platform that houses ebook, homework, activities, and other resources for a given communication title. So in each webinar, we are focusing on just one feature in Launchpad that can help you engage your students. Heather will provide a 15-minute demo, and then we'll open it up for questions. So we are working to keep this brief and useful for you. This week's topic is Learning Curve, our adaptive quizzing program that works to help students master key concepts in the book. So if you're brand new to Macmillan, you've never seen anything in Launchpad, welcome. Uh, if you've used our books, but haven't ventured into the digital realm, or if you've used Launchpad, but haven't had time to dig in, we hope you might learn something new. So wherever you are, uh, there should be something here for you. So before I pass things over to Heather, I wanna go over just a couple of housekeeping items for using this GoToWebinar platform. So you should see this control panel. This is your attendee control panel. It should be probably somewhere in the upper right hand of your uh, computer desktop. So by default, you will see in this top area that you are muted, first of all. We can easily unmute you. <laughs> That's just an automatic setting to cut down on background noise. And also, by default, you have been <clears throat> hooked into the audio using your computer speaker. So if you're hearing us right now, most likely you're all set. But if for whatever reason you would prefer to call in on your phone, just click the phone call button right here, and then the dial-in information will pop up in another box. Um, and then, just to zoom in on a couple of other features here, the raise hand feature that is at the bottom of this little tag on the left side of the control panel, this is what it looks like. You can click this if you would like to raise your hand. And this will be most useful during the question period. We can unmute you and you can ask a question. Um, at any time, this bottom panel, the question box, you can type in a question here and submit it at, at any point. And I will be monitoring that and I can type an answer back to you or I can hold it and wait until we talk if it makes sense to pose it to the larger group. So that is how you can engage with us. And without further ado, I will pass things over to Heather. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. Let me jump on over here. And just to check, uh, you're seeing my screen right now, Amy? Yes. Perfect. Oh, as I hit the wrong button, but that's okay. There we go. All right, uh, so again, welcome to our webinar series. Uh, as Amy said, some of you may already be a little bit familiar with Launchpad, some of you may not be for any number of reasons. Um, but what we wanna do with our time together today is focus on just one particular aspect of Launchpad. Kind of the idea being that, you know, if it's been overwhelming for you or it's just too much to take on, Maybe you just assign the one thing and you can go ahead and use it this fall uh, or even this spring if you wanna try and implement it at the end of the semester. Uh, what we're gonna be looking at today is hands down our most popular online activity, which is our learning curve adaptive quizzing. Uh, again, as Amy said, my name's Heather Halter and I'm your learning solutions specialist for communications with Macmillan Learning, uh, meaning I provide training and pedagogical support to any instructors using our supplemental media products. Before coming to Macmillan, I got my master's in communication from the University of Central Florida, where I actually wrote my thesis on using social media in the classroom. So this idea of media and teaching has been a passion of mine for years. Um, after that, I taught public speaking uh, at a couple different schools for five years. Uh, I taught face-to-face, -face, hybrid, online, uh, and I actually used online media while teaching myself. Most recently, when I was the course director at Full Sail University, I led our department's implementation of speech class, which years ago was the predecessor to Launchpad. And now I get to help instructors uh, do those same implementation things. So it's a pretty great gig. 
With that then, what I wanna go ahead and do is dive on into learning curve. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by looking at what adaptive quizzing is, we'll look at how learning curve works, and then we're gonna take a look at what the benefits are for both you as the instructor and your students. Worth noting uh, that learning curve is available with all of our communication texts for public speaking, human communication, interpersonal, and mass communication as well. So while I'm gonna be demoing from our launch pad for real communication, do know that a book specific version is available for whichever of our texts you're using. And also worth noting, if you want to learn about this in a little bit more detail, I'm happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with you and we'll provide that information at the end. Um, again, because some of you may be new to Launchpad, I do just want to do a very quick overview and then we'll jump right on into Learning Curve. This is the Launchpad homepage. Uh, it's going to look exactly the same for all of our titles, just of course the content in here will vary from title to title. Uh, as you can see, everything in here is divided up by chapter and then we have some kind of just general options down at the bottom here that are available as well. Any chapter that you'd like to check out resources for, you simply click to open it and it tells you what we have. Everything is gonna be labeled so you can know exactly what's in here. Um, these do all have full eBooks along with additional book specific activities, which we actually cover, uh, we'll be covering in the fourth week of our webinars. But if there's anything in here that you want to preview, click on it to open it up and we're actually gonna be coming back to this learning curve in a minute. But I also just wanted to show how easy it is to assign this, um, if there's anything in here that you want to assign to your students for homework, notice how we get this little assign button that pops up over to the right whenever we hover over anything. All we need to do is click assign, select a due date, make sure you've got a point value associated, and click assign. And from there then, that chapter is gonna to jump to the top of the page and you'll see now that that activity now has a blue to do button next to it, which means it's ready for your students to do for homework and to be worth a grade. With that now, let's go ahead and take a look at Learning Curve itself. So we developed Learning Curve to be used as a pre-lecture activity. Basically, if you want students to read chapter two before coming to class, assign them both the reading and the Learning Curve activity. And they're gonna come to class having actually done their readings, and we'll show you how that works in just a second. Uh, but worth noting that you can certainly choose to assign Learning Curve at any point throughout a topic, semester, whenever you find it most useful for your course. It's definitely flexible. So with Learning Curve Adaptive Quizzing, each student is going to get a personalized quizzing experience depending on their comfort level with the content discussed in any given chapter. Um, according to our most recent user survey, 78% of instructors who assigned Learning Curve rated it as a good to excellent activity, and shockingly, 78% of students who completed Learning Curve activities also rated it as good to excellent. So students actually like taking these quizzes, which is kind of a crazy concept, um, but always great. So let's get down to it. Learning Curve Adaptive Quizzing, again, everyone gets a personalized quiz. Now, how that works is through our adaptive engine. Rather than a regular quiz where you've got a flat amount of questions, students can get X amount right, X amount wrong, that's kind of the end of it. Maybe a student gets a 75 and they're okay with it. Instead, with Learning Curve, students answer questions until they reach a target score which we can see in the upper left corner for this particular activity is 600 points now the questions that they're going to receive come in varying difficulty levels the harder the question the more points it's worth and students also have multiple attempts at answering a question as well it's just with each wrong answer they give they receive fewer points and so as a result students are gonna end up answering a different amount of questions to reach that target score based on those differing point values. 
This also adapts by looking at the different subtopics covered here. Um, in this case, we're looking at learning curve for chapter two in real communication. And these are all the different subheadings within the chapter. Now, let's say that one particular student is, uh, does a great job on all the questions that deal with digital origins. The system will actually ask uh, fewer questions in that area because the student's kind of shown mastery of it. But let's say that your student struggles with the questions on the power of the crowd. The system will actually give them more questions in that area um, so that they're spending time with that content that they're not as familiar with. So again, everyone gets a different quiz. Uh, this helps the student to really focus in on what they need help with in particular instead of just a flat blanket of questions. The added benefit of this is it helps deter cheating because everyone's gonna receive a different quiz. No one can cheat off of each other. So really handy there. I'm gonna click on preview as a student so we can get an idea of what this will look like. Uh, this is exactly what your students would see as they take learning curve, except for, of course, the preview as student at the top. Um, but we're going to go ahead and click begin activity. And this is what your students will be presented with on a question screen. Uh, the majority of all the questions in here are going to be multiple choice, so they'll be presented with that. This bar in the middle tracks the progress that the student's making towards the target score as they get questions right, the blue bar fills up. And then in the upper right corner, we can see that this particular question is worth 15 points and worth noting that that's a pretty average level question. Um, so this is just kind of, of average difficulty, not too hard, not too easy. Um, I'm going to take a minute to make sure uh, that I can try and answer this one question. And this is actually, wow. I really have no idea what this could be. So in that case, here we go. Uh, learning in real life here. So I'm a student, I don't know what this answer might be. I do have some help options down at the bottom here. The first of which is to read the ebook page on this topic. And what's really cool about this is, again, we developed this as an activity to help students actually do their readings. So we're not gonna penalize them and instead, uh, in we're not going to spoon feed them the answer either. So instead, students are pointed to where in the textbook they can find this particular topic. I'm not going to spend too much time reading this. I'd love it if I could just kind of glance at it and get an answer. Um, oh, that was actually what I was going to guess. So that's pretty cool. So I see I read through this. I find my answer. I select it and I get the question right, and I get a little bit of information here. I'm told 15 points, great job. That was the correct answer, and here's why. I can see my bar fills up, and then I can move on to the next question. Now again, I've got another 15 pointer here, but let's take a second and see what happens if I get something wrong. Uh, let's say that I'm not sure of the answer, but I don't feel like clicking on the ebook, or maybe I just make a wrong guess. Um, let me try and get this one wrong. Okay. So when we get a question wrong, the student's told, try again. They're given immediate feedback as to why that answer choice was incorrect. And then we can see that I do get another stab at this question, but notice now it's only worth five points instead of my initial 15. And so what students eventually end up learning on their own without you even telling them is that if they put in the effort to do the reading and actually make sure they're answering these questions correctly rather than just kind of skimming through it, they're going to finish their quiz more quickly because they're going to get more points for each question. Uh, let's say I still don't really know what this is. I, of course, can always reference the ebook, but instead I'm going to try get a hint. That's gonna give me a little bit of a prompt, but notice now it took away some additional points. Now my question's only worth two points. Let's say I'm really just stumped. I can go ahead and click show answer, which will flat out tell students the correct answer, but notice now I received zero points. So the student is making no progress towards that target score. 
and worth noting that let's say your student you know thinks they can kind of just click their way through if they go on to the next question and click on show answer again right away they actually get a little prompt telling them to slow down and actually consider the questions so again kind of one of our anti-cheating measures Students can take a break at any point throughout and it will automatically save their progress. So if they maybe need to, you know, they need to leave for work or something comes up, class is starting, they can always take a break and it will save their progress. They're presented with a little progress report here that shows how well they did on those different subtopics. And of course, I only got that one question right. So that's uh, showing up there. I got all the questions on these areas wrong, so it's showing no percentage. Um, the benefit of this to students, of course, is that they're getting a quiz that is customized for them. They're spending time with exactly the content that they need to know and that they need help with. I'm going to click End Preview now and show the benefit of this to you as the instructor. Uh, I'm going to click Show Sample Results here so that we can see what this looks like as students start working on this. Um, I actually don't like those numbers. Let me pull up some more. These come up completely at random. Perfect, that's a little better. Um, so as we said at the start, learning curve is an all or nothing. If you reach that target score by the due date, you receive full credit. If you fail to reach the target score, no credit. And so again, students take quizzes a little more seriously when they're faced with either a 100 or a zero. We can see in this table, anyone who has a little check mark here, um, it shows they reached the target score, so they received full credit for the activity. If the due date had passed for this activity, poor Ada Lovelace and Louis Pasteur, they did not reach the target score, though they're so close, uh, they're going to receive a zero for this activity. Now, the benefit to you as the instructor comes uh, not only by students having actually done their readings, but if you assign this as a pre-lecture activity, you can always take a peek at these topic performance details before your class starts, and it can help tailor how your class can go. We can see that students did a pretty good job on these first three topics. Maybe you don't need to uh, spend as much time talking about this as class. They've already got a pretty good grasp. However, Overcoming digital challenges is something that they really struggled with a bit. Maybe you want to spend a little bit more time talking about that, maybe add in some extra activities. Um, but of course, either way, students are coming to class already understanding their readings, so it's less time that you have to spend lecturing and more time that you can spend on actual activities and application. Uh, so that in a nutshell, is learning curve, uh, definitely our most popular feature within Launchpad. It's really helpful for students and of course for you as the instructor. I want to close up with a quote from Katie Fulton at Iowa State University. She's actually a faculty consultant with us and has been using learning curve in her own uh, public speaking courses. And she says, adaptive learning is one of the most promising uses for technology in education. And Launchpad uses this technology to provide valuable opportunities for instructors to monitor student learning so that we can focus our efforts where they are most needed. Thank you guys so much for your attention today. I hope you got a lot out of this and that you are now as excited about Learning Curve as I am. And with that, I'll turn it over to Amy for some Q&A. Thank you, Heather. So we actually have a couple of questions come through in the question box. Great. And um, the first one is uh, whether this quizzing um, will work in Canvas. Um, and then if so, what it looks like in the grade book, how that grade comes through. Got it. So as long as we have it set up at your school, we do offer integration with various LMS systems. Of course, Canvas being one, um, also Blackboard, D2L, and Moodle as well. And I unfortunately don't have a great uh, actual example to show, but what's uh, how it kind of works is that you first set up the learning curve assignment or any assignment you like in Launchpad. 
you then go into your Canvas or other LMS course and set up a link out to that activity. That way then students have a nice seamless way to access everything. And when you link that activity, it's going to create a column in your LMS or Canvas gradebook. And the score that the students get on the activity in Launchpad will automatically then transfer into your Canvas gradebook so it can live right alongside any other existing grades that you give for your exams or anything like that. Okay. All right. I think that was good. And then one more about uh, the, the topic that are in each quiz, this, um, we have someone asking if that is editable, if you're able to, within a group of chapters or a particular quiz, choose the topics that, that can be covered. Yeah, let me jump back into Learning Curve real quick so I can show you what that looks like. Um, so here, of course, is the instructor dashboard, which just pops up right away. Um, you, we do have this Edit Topics button. And what this allows for is the option to turn off any of those subtopics that are covered in here. So if you don't talk about the power of the crowd in your class, or you just don't want to quiz your students on that, you can uncheck the box. Any questions from that topic will be pulled from the pool, so students won't answer any of those questions. Uh, and then just worth noting that we do build the target score based on the number of subtopics here. So it is going to adjust from 600 to 450 points. Basically, each subtopic is worth 150 points. So that's how our math adds up there. Um, we just click Save Changes. This is just explaining what I said about the target score. And then, of course, you can see now you've got your edited quiz. Uh, and just worth noting while I'm here, if you do still want that target score to be up around 600 points, you want students to answer a couple more questions, you can totally edit this target score to, quite frankly, any number you'd like. Um, we don't recommend going any lower than what the default is, but by all means, please feel free to make this whatever score you'd like. Okay, that's, that's it for questions. Um, so I will just uh, wrap up here with a couple, um, just a couple of pieces of information. On this slide, these are just a few ways that you can follow up on what we've discussed today. At the top, you'll see um, a URL, a website for both Learning Curve, which is the quizzing program that Heather showed you, and then for Launchpad, which is our whole online platform. So you can go to learningcurveworks.com or launchpadworks.com. And on those sites, you will find some demo videos, case studies, and other resources that you can explore at your leisure. Um, then if you would like to take a deeper dive into Learning Curve or anything else um, that we have in the digital space for um, any of our con titles, you can schedule a time with Heather by using this website, meetme.so slash Heather Kimball, and this is an online calendar. So you go to this website, you find a time that works with your schedule, and snag some time with Heather to discuss you know, whatever it is that you've got going on, anything you'd like to take a closer look at, something maybe you've tried and need some help with, um, Heather is a wonderful resource. And then if you would like to explore our catalog at this website, macmillanlearning.com slash communication, you will find the catalog of our whole communication line of titles. Anything else, you can send me an email. If you need to know who your rep is, if you need a sample of something, if you have a question that we didn't ask today or we didn't cover or anything else that you need if you would just like to say hello um, please don't hesitate to send me an email at amy.hayes at mcmillan.com there on the bottom of the slide and last but not least i will make a plug for the rest of the webinars we have in this series um, there is one more of these tomorrow on learning curve if you just can't get enough you could come back and join us at um, 12 o'clock eastern and then you can see kind of the, the rest of the month we've got, um, we're going to be digging into video assessment next week in, again, three identical sessions on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The week of April 17th, or the 17th, 18th, and 19th, we will be talking about how to build your own quizzes and tests in Launchpad. And then the last week, we have four unique sessions. So each one will be, again, looking at resources in Launchpad, but just for a particular course. 
So we'll be talking about MathCom, InterpersonalCom, HumanCom, and public speaking. And this URL on the bottom is where you go to sign up for any of these. You can also go back to the original email you got um, about these sessions. You can also send me an email and I will send you this link. Um, we'd love to have you join us for any of the rest of these. They will all be recorded and shared. So even if you are not able to come in person, go ahead and register and then you'll be sure to get uh, a follow-up email with a recording. Thank you for your time today. Uh, we appreciate you engaging with us and we hope to talk to you more in the future. Have a good day.